Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle House. I'm going to need more Gemini mailers. And in this video, we need to talk about how everybody needs to panic. The fire sale must begin. The copper age is doomed. Doomed, I tell you, Dr. Doomed, I tell you. I've been up for many hours, nonstop, working on this Copper Age Index. I feel like John Nash finding the game theory equation. I feel like I've figured out and cracked the code, the theory of everything. And in this video, we have to ask ourselves the question, is this Copper Age Index doomed to crash in the months to come? This might be a very boring video. Again, we are going to be showing lots of lines, charts, and graphs but it is also very important information for us to take away. But ultimately, at the end, I will give my explanations and my reasonings for a lot of things, and I will serve us all some copium so we don't have to madly list all of our books. But before I get into the video, if you guys drop me a like or comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, helps with the channel, doing those things, I appreciate it. But let's get into this video here today. Let's talk about the Copper Age Index and what it is. Of course, the Copper Age Index is the top 100 sold books Per the Copper Age, I take the highest volume of graded book, I count those numbers, I take the final sale of the month, looking at the market close, and I get all of these numbers from GPA data, I calculate them all on a month-by-month -month basis, and we get what is effectively known as the index. Now, there's no easy way to transition to this, so let us just rip the Band-Aid off, take a look at the Copper Age Index from the years of 2018 all the way through 2022, five years of data, and here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the Copper Age Index for the key 100 books. Now, as you guys can see, the graph, just from a macro view, looks very similar to that of what we've seen with the Silver and Bronze Age Indexes. But as we kind of dig into it, there's going to be a lot more interesting takeaways. Don't worry, you don't need to zoom in. I will break it down piece by piece, but before I get into those specific highlights, let's t compare some of the graphs side by side. Now, here are the three index graphs laid over top of each other. Now, they all look similar in the sense that we know that all comic books got inflated in that 2021 area. But what we don't necessarily get, just in terms of a macro view of these three charts side by side, is you know kind of in the weeds what some of the details of the returns were. So let's kind of dive into that. And let's specifically start with the 2018 and 2019 prices of the Copper Age Index. Now, from kind of a general view, you'll notice that this graph is pretty flat overall. And I think that that is the first place that we need to start, where if you were to look at the Bronze and Silver Age graphs in these particular years, uh, I was actually able to get some sense of a yearly return that you would typically see on those books. Now, I know a lot of you guys have been kind of saying that, you know, you don't think comics could reliably make those returns, but I've always held the belief that when you're focusing on those top 100 blue chip key books and you were able to buy them in a vacuum, you could in fact make those returns. Well, here's where I start to think maybe some of the people that felt like comic books can't return those things do have a point, and it has specifically to do with the books coming out of the Copper Age, simply due to the fact that once you get to the Copper Age, I mean, the censuses for these books, even more so than that of the large censuses of Giant Size X-Men and Hulk 181 and things like that, these censuses really start to triple, almost quadruple. So, you know, being able to get these returns becomes, you know, a, a multiplicative effect where, you know, now you have to have that many more holders that are willing to pay, you know, more than the last person who bought it. And in order to get consistent returns, you're going to need that to happen again and again and again. And with the Copper Age, it doesn't necessarily seem like that has been able to sustain. Now, one of the other interesting things about looking at this graph is that you'll actually notice that the index was more valuable in the year of 2018 compared to the year of 2019. And there's a few interesting factors for that that I really wanna talk about. Now, when we think about this Copper Age Index and some of the key books that you would imagine are a part of this index, you know, ASM 361, ASM 300, a lot of Venom keys, a lot of Deadpool keys. Well, what do we know about what was happening in pop culture around that time? Well, we happen to have a lot of tentpole films that were related to a lot of the keys in the Copper Age. That was the year that we had Deadpool 
Deadpool number two. That was the year that we had the Venom film coming out. That was also the year that we had the Donny Cates Venom run. So a lot of the key books that make up the Copper Age were really starting to get inflated all the way back in 2018. And then once we got to, you know, after those movies, after that particular calendar year, we actually saw a pullback in the index. So, you know, sometimes I'll get those comments in my other index videos where people will say, I think we're going back to 2018 prices where I don't necessarily think I would ever agree with those comments for silver and bronze age. I am starting to think that that is a possibility that we could test the high end of the copper age values for 2018 prices because of the years that they were having. You can see that in August of 2018, there was a record index value at 17,365, and that would drop all the way to 14,983 you know, the next summer in May of 2019. So very interesting to think about that as I move on to what was going on with the Copper Age once we get to, you know, the COVID lockdown with 2020 and 2021 and people really started to buy a lot of those comic books. And speaking of buying comic books, let's take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video, Torpedo Comics. Now, if you guys don't know, Torpedo Comics is one of the best comic shops in the country. They are based out of Las Vegas, Nevada, but also have locations in the Southern California area as well. They have special events in in-store signings, claim sales online, and they even have this online store where you can buy mystery boxes, raw comic books, graded slabs, and even trading cards if you're into that sort of thing. I, of course, like my comics raw. And using their handy search features, I can go over here and search for great Copper Age books, like this one right here, Dark Hawk number one, the only book out of the Copper Age that would clearly never go down in value. And the best part about TorpedoComics.com is if you use my promo code SWAGGLEHOSS, you'll be able to save 10% off on your order. What's not to love about that? I want to thank Torpedo Comics for sponsoring this video, and let's get back into our index. All right, let's hop over now to the boom period of 2020 and 2021. And here's where I think it gets very interesting with the Copper Age. I mean, we can see that like the Bronze and Silver Age, this one definitely had that rocket moon ship blast off in the early months of 2021. But one of the things I think is even more interesting about the Copper Age here is that the boom period for this particular index actually started to happen all the way back in around the April and May time of 2020, which is not actually the case of what we saw with the Bronze and the Silver Age, where typically those indexes really started to kind of, you know, go up in massive amounts of value around the November, December time. And one of the reasons I think that this might be the case for the Copper Age is that, you know, just thinking about it, you have a lot of comic book collectors coming back into the hobby. People were bored. People were rediscovering their nostalgia. And of course, the Copper Age has a lot of those books that are nostalgic for a lot of people who are now you know, older, who have the money, who have that disposable income. And these are the books that people were really starting to buy up very early on. So let's measure some of these values here. If we go back all the way to February of 2020, and we think that that's going to be the bottom of the index at around 14,732. And then we go to April of 2021, where it goes all the way to 54,108. That is an increase of roughly 400%. The index effectively quadrupled. Uh, depending on where you want to start to measure it. Now, uh, to put it into perspective, the Silver Age Index effectively doubled, the Bronze Age Index effectively, you know, 2.5x. And now here we are with the Copper Age, you know, tr not just doubling, not just tripling, but effectively quadrupling, which, you know, causes a lot of concern for where we might end up, which I will talk about later on in the video. Now, if we're a little bit more conservative and we want to measure the boom from November of 2020, where the index was around 24,204, and then shot up in April 2021 to 54,108 again, that would be an increase of roughly 225%, which would effectively be more in line to what the Bronze Age did. So the question is this, was the Copper Age Index already undervalued going into 2020 and it had a lot more room to grow, or were the Copper Age numbers already inflated and we have a lot more correcting to do. Well, let's kind of take a look at where we are now and talk about some of that correction that could be coming. Well, the November month for 2022 was at 28,842. The year finished out in December at 28,217. That is a de decrease of 2% from the month to month. That is a similar decrease to what the Bronze Age did. And if we look at the yearly high to where we are currently in December, that is a 33% correction. Now, 
here's where it gets kind of interesting. If we think about the silver book values from the top of 2022 to where it is in December, that had a pullback of 45%, where the bronze book values had a pullback of 38%. And in this yearly calendar, so far the Copper Age has only pulled back 33%. So you have to wonder if this index is still floating above the trend line overall. Now it's a little bit hard to define a trend line for the Copper Age because we haven't necessarily seen consistent year over year returns. I haven't been able to kind of uh, calculate that. But if we're sort of eyeballing the graph and thinking about where the values could be, you know, if we, and if we lined it out to, you know, early 2000s, effectively the value or the trend line would look something like this. And if we're kind of looking at where we are now at the $28,000 range, it feels like we have a lot more correcting to do for those Copper Age books. That is, of course, if we're talking about you know where the index was early in 2020. But like I already said, the index was heavily inflated earlier in 2020. So maybe the index was undervalued for a time. Or once again, like I said, we have a lot more pulling back to do. Well, let's talk about some of the key points of you know some of the data, some of the numbers I had been seeing when I was doing this index. And these are some of the things that I really want to kind of emphasize to you guys. The first one is volatility in the per book sale. Now, this is something I find very interesting uh, as I look through numbers and numbers and numbers and numbers again and again and again. Basically, every single sale in any given month, in any given year, could swing massively. And that is something that I didn't necessarily see, you know, for Bronze Age books. And sometimes you can see it for silver, but not nearly as massive as Copper Age. And what I mean by this is like, there could be a sale for a New Mutants 87 on eBay. Somebody just decided I'm gonna pay, you know, whatever, $400 as a buy it now today. And then the next day at auction, it could just sell for $120. And those are sort of the swings that you would see in any given sale, in any given book, for the Copper Age consistently. And one of the reasons for that is because, you know, there's just such a high census. There's so many books out there that depending on who is watching was either going to get a great deal that day or they were just gonna kind of FOMO into it. And that's also one of the things that I generally saw a lot of with the Copper Age books is that FOMO seemed to have the most effect on the values for those books. You know, you would see these massive swings for Venom Lethal Protector number four because of movie speculation and because it's at a value range that is easy for people to buy into, easy for people to FOMO into, you know, not so easy for people to FOMO into a four figure Silver Age book. Now, additionally, the other key takeaway is that, you know, there's inconsistent returns here. This is something I already made mention of when I was breaking down the numbers, inconsistent returns, hard to effectively say that the books have gone up in value over time. I mean, certainly the main key books of the Copper Age do seem to have those kind of year over year returns. If you know, for thinking about New Mutants 98, things like that, generally speaking, those have gone up over time. But this index is also where you're gonna see more of those flash in the pan books where, you know, we may never get back to their peak prices, you know, talking about, you know, some of those characters that came out of the Venom movie, like first appearance of Shriek. Now, the last little thing to discuss is what I talked about with the nostalgia factor. It does feel like, you know, just thinking about the age of collectors, who was going back into comics, who was buying back into into this, you know, a lot of people were coming in from the nostalgia side of things. And that is why, you know, we start to see the inflated numbers so early. And really, you know, the biggest kind of cope or thought we have to think about with where this index is going is this big question right there. Have those COVID kind of nostalgia collectors, have they been converted into holders overall? You know, I think that's really the big question of where we are going with the copper age in terms of the values of this index. If those COVID nostalgia collectors came in and they're already checked out. Well, a lot of the values of those books are, I think are gonna to continue to fall off, gonna to continue to go down in value. But if those COVID nostalgia collectors have been converted into holders, then I think it is possible that we could have a softer landing, so to speak, uh, with the uh, Copper Age Index correction. I think it'll correct more in line to that of the Bronze Age. But, you know, really hard to say at this point, very interesting to kind of look at this index. It is a lot different than what I thought I was going to get in terms of the results. And it definitely seems to tell a different story from what we saw in the bronze and silver age indexes. And I think this is finally the index that gives a lot of credence 
to those people who say, I think we're going back down to 2018 prices. I think for a lot of these copper age books, that actually could be the case because a lot of them did in fact quadruple in terms of their values, which is not necessarily the same as what some of the Bronze Age and the Silver Age books did because those books effectively doubled. But it is also very interesting to think, I mean, if a book goes from, you know, say $30 and it turns into a $150 book and that effectively quadruples its price, I mean, at $150, are people, you know, really gonna think it's gonna go all the way back down to 30? I mean, maybe it's still gonna pull back to a value range that, you know, when people buy something for $75, it's really not a big deal overall. I mean, that's kind of the economy of scale that we have to think about for the Copper Age, and there's ultimately a lot of variables with it. Well, that is all I have for this video. That was me going through this index. Obviously, next up, I will be doing a modern age index. Not sure when I'll have the time to put that together, but I will definitely have it for you guys. Let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think about the Copper Age books? Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I'll see you in the next video.